Okay, so, uh, you know, I'll start this presentation immediately with that title with a, you know, a spoiler alert that, you know, the presentation isn't about that equality is, is wrong uh, by any means. Um, you know, on, on the contrary, you know, the, the idea of equality needs an homage. I mean, it's done an incredible amount for us. And to sort of um, build with what Rufus was talking about earlier, um, many things that we get stuck in or a source of stuckness are a, a response to a traumatic situation. Uh, most of our ancestors would have been at some time stuck in a highly uh, traumatic situation of serfdom or slavery or, uh, you know, oppression of, of various kinds. And the idea of equality, I mean, you know, is, is, is gotten us where we are in many ways is serving as a, a political rallying cry. Um, and so by no means am I going to question, uh, you know, overall the, the, the use of the idea of equality or say that it's wrong. Um, but, um, I'll start with just a short story, right? The first time I ever visited a, a Plum Village uh, monastery. So actually it was the, the sister uh, monastery in, in San Diego called Deer Park. It was the first time I, I heard this, but in every, uh, you know, every monastery in the system, they do this. Um, before a meal, we renew our aspiration to be free of the inferiority complex, the superiority complex and the equality complex. And the first time I heard that, I said, oh, wow, that's really interesting. You know, they're talking about something that I, that I know about. And I, I took a sort of trip down memory lane. Um, and particularly the first sentence coming from, from my mother, who is a school teacher, who would complain bitterly at the dinner table that um, she had to teach the children that they could all do anything they want. And then you know, she would have these students who would be not particularly good basketball players um, who thought they were going to be for professionals in, you know, in middle school uh, and they didn't need to study anything. Uh, but sort of as a, a matter of course, it, she had to, to say, well, anybody can do anything we want. Um, or times in, in university when things got very contentious, for example, uh, a professor uh, insinuated that the warrior culture of Japan, feudal Japan, um, put different emphasis on the value of males and females because basically they were fighting all the time for land, right? It was a samurai culture. Um, and so men being more, you know, capable or, or better at wielding swords on average got a higher value. And, and then there was a huge amount of consternation, which the existence of size and strength differences between males and females generally were disputed and, you know, the, the class erupted into, into argument. Um, of course, anybody, you know, knows um, testosterone is it's just what steroids are, synthetic, synthetic testosterone, um, you know, giving, taking extra amount of, of that typically male hormone is considered a performance enhancing drug in athletics. That's what they do is they just measure the amount of testosterone in your system. And if you have too much of it, then uh, you're disqualified from competition. Uh, so there's, there's some difference there. And then of course, uh, much of the ideology of communism, which I uh, can't go into because of time constraints, but I, I worked for a while as an economic uh, researcher in Tanzania, which was the, the only African socialist country, uh, uh, sort of working with people who'd, who'd been there under Julius Nyerere and, 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 and who could tell me all about uh, what happened, uh, the, the, the perversities of, of the, that developed in that system, which are very much in parallel to what happened in Eastern Europe. Um, but going back to, to Plum Village, um, you know, we understand the inferiority complex, the superiority complex, and I think, but you know, what about equality? Um, okay. And so um, the difference is basically, uh, you can see my picture now, yeah? Okay. You know, I mean, it's really, you know, I'm greater than you, as Thich Nhat Hanh would say, or I'm, I'm worried that I'm less than you, but if, if, you know, I'm worried about being 
equal, right? We're still measuring, right? I, I, I'm doing that on okay. purpose. Yeah, I can I can resume sharing at any, any point. Um, so, uh, you know, and what that builds is an experience of ourselves as um, separate from each other, right? Um, and so experiencing ourselves not as a we, but as two separate people, right? Um, so at that point, um, which is called, was sort of a dualism. And I think the, the, the point that I wanna get at by saying questioning equality is a bit like, we've decided that it's, it's real, right? Okay, I should skip forward to this, right? To, to get that sort of made a little bit more concrete, we could say, you know, X is good, but obsession with X is not so good. So if you put anything in those blanks, you know, then most people agree with good looking, being good looking is good, but being obsessed with good looking is not so good. Being intelligent is good, but being obsessed with in intelligence is not so good. However, my experience is that if you put equality in that, uh, that um, blank, then people can get quite reactive, right? Which is really, this is sort of a, a, a paraphrase of a, what would end up make being a paraphrase then if you put equality in that blank of a famous quote by Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, equality is not a source of suffering, but the equality complex is. Right? Because we're separate from one another, which a lot of people um, would understand about that. Um, okay, and so at that point, I think we'd take a break for just a few questions if people have them. And do people understand essentially the, the, the point there? And I'll unmute yourself if you have a, have a question or a comment at this point. We, we can take more time. Andrea, I well, the, the overall uh, things that we're doing is very beautiful. First, uh, I think that when we touch um, subject like equality, I mean, in this uh, uh, PowerPoint, we can't we. Uh, we start from a moral stance and we arrive also to a psychological stance when we speak about obsession. But all this, uh, let's say, unfolding uh, of these problematics uh, come from the Enlightenment period. And we are, we are not yet out from the Enlightenment period. Uh, in the Enlightenment period, they start to say, your rights are my right, my freedom is your freedom. But who draw the lines then someone else come and, say, and ask? Who draw the lines that my rights are your rights or my freedom is your freedom? And when we speak about these things, then uh, a system comes, a group of people come and start to think hierarchy to be in order to system. Because we uh, submissively have in our human nature that sometimes we are exhausted, as Alistair said, and we need, a gu and we need guidance. We need someone that takes over our responsibility to make the job. So the thing is that unless we don't change ourselves first, then we are like a, uh, a cat that is after his tail continually. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I was clear in saying this, you know. Uh, Equality is a good stance, intellectually speaking, but in the concrete, in the in tangibly, what is it? Right. What is, we make all these long-winded, uh, beautiful ideas, uh, and we talk about them. But in to practice, I mean, the the the, the game now is yeah to put into practice these things, and it's very difficult. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, 
as species, we are evolved at that point to do this step that is necessary to do it, to transform society. Because otherwise we create system over system and it's since centuries that we create system based on structural hierarchies because it seems that this is the only thing that we can do. It's like that comes out naturally, you know. Uh, like the lion sees the head of the uh, herd and there are all the girls of the lions going hunting, you know. So it's a, it's a structural system, that, but it's by nature, of course. We have the gift of um, the intellect uh, and, of course, to understand emotion. And I think, uh, if I'm allowed, Rufus, what you have started with, uh, uh, with, the, with the lady is because we don't recognize so often our emotions. So we fail to put into practice what we really need, not just what we really want and what the other's needs are, you know. So, uh, yeah. but I'm curious to go to see how, where the quality goes now because it's something that is crucial to them. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, 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 I totally agree with everything you're, you're saying. I mean, that, that's kind of, you know, I would say that that's basically, when you say that something is the truth, right, that basically yeah. what's happened is we decided equality is the truth. And you can say it's the intellectualization of moral life. It's the way, like what the West has used to kind of make morality intellectual, like it does everything else, right? Which is just more alienation of life itself. It's like, because people don't love each other, we need to in invest in a system of morality uh, that can safeguard us. And we'll build it on equality, but in order to enforce it, then we need a system. So we're back in, you know, we're back in, in you know, mechanics again. And, and, and you know, how do you, and, and, and you know, we see it, what strikes people is a, is a mechanical uh, political dialogue, of course, it's all around us, no, no surprise. Right. Any other uh, comments? I'm happy to jump on and then invite uh, the female voices. For me, the question here overall into the group, because I think we're all pretty advanced, is like how meta do we go? So I think it's a very necessary to discussion to go beyond equality, though seeing 98% of you know, the wealth of humanity distributed to very few people or to a very large extent still seeing female rights suppressed on the vast majority of all countries. I'm totally a fan of like natural hierarchies and the whole, you know, holarchical, let's say, meta um, systematic approach, like from integral. And at the same time, I think what we need to build in into society, is it's nice to think beyond equality, once equality is installed, right? I'm lower middle class, middle class, avant-garde, social entrepreneur, living Berlin Mitte, then it becomes funky. But to the vast majority of very underprivileged, like let's say a bottom of the pyramid, um, it, it only becomes sort of a mental abstraction, right? When you live, live, live like bottom of the pyramid, let's say in India or wherever. Anyhow, I just wanted to make that point because we need to abstract the level of abstraction that we bring onto a discussion to be able to discern on what level of discourse we're actually operating. And with that, I leave this whole thing. Happy to okay. just, to, just to briefly respond to that, Alistair, another way of looking at that question, I get it sometimes, is that the West is vigorously espoused, to put it mildly, its belief in equality and utterly failed to do this for a very long time. So at the bottom of your you know, the thing is that, well, we can afford to let go of equality after we achieve it. What evidence is there that this will ever achieve it would be my response, right? So, so I would look at history and say there is zero chance of it ever being, being reached by this goal. So saying that it's premature because we have to wait until it is achieved, in a system that has utterly failed to ever really achieve it, right? by basically pursuing the same line of logic that has been pursued, right, is, is dif a difficult proposition, right? And so that, that's the question is like, is it a luxury to let go of it or is it an admission that basically what we've been doing so thus far has not been super effective, right? Like we have not stood for third world equality, really, right? It's the third world, right? 
the when the climate change starts to hit, I mean, uh, and, and Bangladesh goes underwater, I mean, who really believes the West is morally prepared or has been morally preparing to do what's required uh, to achieve equality in those circumstances? Uh, just quick, quick question to the other the people here. Right. The the uh, the fact that we're here is not equal. Right? The other the this is like selected by by the the organization. Then that we're here. So I'm just curious. The other the the fact that we're here. The the equality is the right uh, topic like a right approach because if we if it's really equal then then we wouldn't be here. Like the, the, there was there was some kind of the value system uh, at play, and then that's brought us here. And uh, so I'm curious here if the equality is the right topic uh, to discuss among these uh, members of individuals. Well, I think what we're trying to point is like, what are a lot of our blind spots as a collective that holds us, that gets us stuck because we're obviously stuck. Like you look at the world, we can't sort out climate change. Like there is a rise of anger, political anger that is happening. And what are those blind spots? And like, we were trying to say, it's like, oh, the equality complex is a massive blind spot that we hold. And where is it then in our life, we see equality, this, the, the equality, complex play outside in the world but also in our life and like equality is a concept it doesn't exist out there in the world you can't give me equality you yeah me i mean i think we, so we need to kind of wrap it up as well it's like as well i mean to really get to the point which i think um we get the that like love and compassion right are, are like what people actually get to the like if you actually look at wisdom traditions, right? Who have guided most societies throughout history, right? The core of morality usually is cultivating love and compassion. It is like virtually absent from the conversation of the West. And my response to that would be, look, look at James Baldwin. James Baldwin, you know, when he, he started the thing, why did not talk to white people about racism anymore really? Because he said back in the fifties and sixties, I don't want to be apt to tell you why you are racist. You tell me, right? And so if, you know, who's perpetuating inequality in the world? Well, like the people, you know, who are probably, were part, probably part of that intellectual culture. And it's a bit like, I would kind of say that, like what, what Baldwin said was to look really hard inside. Uh, you know, that white people should work really hard inside and tell him, why are they so racist? Why can't they get rid of their racism? And so, I mean, the conversation in that, you know, in that discussion kind of falls back on the people who are perpetrating it, right? And if we are unequal and somehow part of a system which generates inequalities, but we are the powerful people, you can say like, well, you know, we feel bad about privilege, but, but okay, with great privileges comes great responsibilities. If you aren't looking inside and saying like, why are we stuck, right? They can't tell us why we are stuck. The people aren't here. I mean, they don't, they probably never met anybody like us. No one is gonna come from Sub-Saharan Africa and tell you why you are stuck. Just my personal point of view, Ryan. Uh, How oh, about very intentionally? I have not heard Sana Rodielu, Sana Rekula, Saga Rantanen, and ah, Right, okay, Alistair, if you want to moderate. Okay. Sana, I saw you recommending a book. Uh, Reauthoring the world. Would you like to give us a little information about what this book is about? Yeah, it's, um, 
I don't know if my internet will break up. Um, it's just that we're we're blind to the dominant narratives. Really, we have dominant narratives in the world, such as in the hyper individualism, commercialism, patriarchy, whatever. And then we're allergic to those words. So if I say these narratives in the West and other cultures have other narratives and it's just like firm and accept them and that's like that's the only way to be able to lean into new narratives um, and and really to see like okay inequality is the symptom of something else uh, what is it the symptom of it's it's not the disease uh, so, and racism that's also a symptom of something and the only way to, to also move on to find a way to be in this world in a racist society racist structures so yes probably i have a lot of racism within me i don't want to i'm not responsible responsible for it but i can take responsibility to if i can take responsibility for it. Uh, it starts with me and i see like all of us the systems we live in as humans it's living systems so the, the change starts with me and um yeah, on the regard of uh, the individual and the collective individual and the system, yeah. So that's what I'm sitting with right now. And that's why I recommended that book by Chen Swart because it, in a very simple way, puts words to these narratives on how to change them. So if you're a facilitator, it's a very interesting approach. Just to check, Liam, I mean, we want to let more people share. Also, just to create, this This was intentionally a two-part session um, because it takes time to go into these things. I, I know that Bjorn may not feel that we have answered his question fully, but I can assure you, or I assure you we're going to attempt to, um, but just to flag this, the session two tomorrow, we can continue now, but just to be clear that like we're kind of part of the way through and we'll be continuing both the equality complex, but then coming back into how, you know, how uh, I think like Sana was just alluding to it, which is um, kind of distinguishing certain things starts to give you a power. And, and like, when you see something, you have now some power to act about it or not. You know, you can take responsibility for it. You're no longer just at the effect of it. Um, 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 and, you know, and, and I think also Liam was alluding uh, earlier to like what's really behind a quality conversation compassion and love so just to say there's going to be part two tomorrow that will continue this so it's not like we this is it because this is almost like we're in the middle and we've not yet reached completion but i also want to allow us time now i know we are at time if people do need to draw yeah i think the discussion is fine you know and, and just to echo sana's point i think sana was really getting at it that yeah it's like separation is is at the root of all of these things right and, and we kind of we're really getting back to this realization that non-separation, there's something, you know, basic human goodness, which is at the root of inequality and racism. Uh, and that, that's the, you know, take on Han's point of the, of the, of the quote is that, you know, equality, you, I, and we have to be equal. Well, these are two separate entities and, and that's a certain kind of thinking, which is not, it's discriminatory, right? In the Buddhist sense, right? discriminating you from I and comparing them, right? That it's in a mindset of comparison. Uh, and, and yeah, I think that's what I'd like to say for it from now. And, you know, otherwise, you know, I just think people yeah. have time for the discussion. So we go. For it. Yeah, I think what we're trying to hear at Life Itself point to is like, if we are here at Untitled to imagine a radically different future, 
it is important to really question what are the ground on which we stand like you can't build a future before you kind of made some space for it and so it is very important that we interrogate what are maybe things that we the pillar in which we've built a society that led us to where we are now both the wonders of it and the dysfunctionality of it it's like try, if we don't do that first it's like putting concrete on top of shit and the exercise we're doing here is like okay let's take out the concrete and look at the shit a bit clean that up so we can actually truly create a beautiful radically better future and it is something that takes time and is looking at our shadows a bit uh, and it's an important exercise to do i noticed alice and pasted the chat but we can we can share that so again um you can also find us at hello at, at, at life itself reaches us. You know, you are writing just to- Yeah, I'm, I'm in just a second. I know, I know. Okay. You don't need too much. I'm being bossy. But yeah, I'll, bossy. I put my email address on the chat channel, but I will also put the general email. Um, and you can also ch see- Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. The typo. Yes. I think it's, Hannah's already posted for you above. Okay, great. Thank you. That's amazing. So uh, if people want to go off mute and just say ciao or arrivederci, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so, okay. so much. Thank you. Hope to see you around. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all here.